Emmanuel College and all of the other associations which facilitated my uh, presence here this evening. And they did such a spectacular job in hosting me. Friends, colleagues, elders, students, brothers and sisters in Islam. No one can deny the fact that Islam is very much in the spotlight today. Everywhere you look, social media, you turn on the news, the TV, the newspapers, magazines, billboards, wherever you are, whether you're in your home, you're outside, we're constantly hearing about Islam and the Muslims. And because of this, many people cannot distinguish between what is the true Islam and what is the hijacked version of Islam that the media portrays to many of us and all throughout the world today. Nowadays, within our society, there are many negative thoughts and beliefs and ideas and portrayals about Islam and the Muslims. But in spite of that, we find that the number of Muslims are increasing on a daily basis. And we find that increasing numbers of people such as yourselves are seeking more knowledge and information and awareness about this way of life and about this religion. And more often than not, many of us are being pleasantly surprised by the fruits of our research as students, in which I hope all of you will be surprised and enlightened this evening, as well as be given the ability to distinguish what is the Islam of fact and what is the Islam of fiction. Friends, students, Islam is the religion and way of life of about one-fifth or more of the world's total population. Muslims are of diverse nationalities, ethnicities, cultures, races. Some are American, such as me, born and raised in Northeastern United States. Some are from Africa, some are from Indonesia, some are from China, some are from South America. You will find the diversity amongst the followers of Islam very diverse and you won't find it in many of the other faiths and way of life throughout the world. And the religion of Islam teaches that all human beings are created equal and that no distinction should be made between anyone based on superficial differences such as race, such as color, such as ethnicity, social status, and the likes. Many don't understand Islam and the practices of Muslims and tend to perceive Muslims' attitudes as uncompromising and demanding. And these misunderstandings are frequently due to unmistakable differences between people's individual concept of religion and the concept of religion amongst Muslims. Islam and the practices of Muslims can indeed seem strange to a society in which to many people, religion no longer plays a role in the majority of our everyday lives. But to a dedicated Muslim, Islam is life. Islam is freedom. Islam is liberation. Islam is peace, inner peace, 
outer peace, and Islam is sacrifice. And to the Muslim, there is no division between the secular and the sacred, between religion and everyday life. He lives his life working, studying, buying, selling, and worshiping his creator, and seeking his rewards. To a Muslim, his religion is what motivates him to take a particular direction in life. As many of you have chosen a particular direction in life by coming to this college. His religion is what motivates him to love for his neighbor what he loves for himself. Rather love more for his neighbor what he loves for himself. His religion is what motivates him to stand up for the truth, to speak out against oppression, injustice, transgression, and evil deeds and evil acts. To Muslims, religion is not merely a personal issue or something symbolic pertaining to a limited area of one's existence. Rather, it involves molding a balanced way of life suitable not only to Muslims, but to everyone who inclines towards peace, justice, respect for human rights, and respect for human dignity. In the hearts of Muslims all throughout the world, their religion remains both a secure refuge and the most effective motivator for tackling all kinds of challenges in life while preserving the distinctive character of the Muslim believer and the pattern of his particular culture and outwardly practices. In Islam, and to the practicing Muslim, religion is a dynamic system that organizes the progression of life according to basic general principles and flexible rulings that guarantee potential benefits in all aspects of life. And since there is no conflict between Islam and scientific research, every new discovery in the world of matter, energy, time, space, only increases the believer in faith and humility towards the creator of the universe who devised and organized and planned and projected and systemized such a plan and a wonderful creation that we witness around us and then assigned to human beings their place and their noble role in this creation. Muslims believe that God's final revelation, which we are going to talk a little bit about tonight, called the Qur'an, which is the final revelation that God sent to mankind after He sent the Torah and the Zabur, the Psalms and the Injil to Jesus and He put the icing on the cake of revelations with the final revelation to the Prophet Muhammad which is contained in the Noble Qur'an. So Muslims, we believe that God's final revelation contains cures and solutions for all the social ills that we see happening before our eyes in our societies. But all we need to do is start learning and start reading and start being coming more aware about Islam and the Muslims who are around us everywhere we go. So what is Islam as a whole? Islam is an Arabic word which means, who can tell me? Peace. Close. <laughs> you guys are all students of liberal arts, right? Here? Religion, history, okay. Islam is an Arabic word which means submission. And 
Once you submit to your Creator, then what comes about through that submission? Peace and contentedness. So this submission to the Creator of the universe is done by following His divine commandments that He sent in His final book of Revelation. And following His guidance that He sent to each prophet and messenger that He sent to mankind. Islam is a complete way of life. It isn't only for the mosque or for at home. Islam is everywhere. And the practice of Islam is implemented in every aspect of a Muslim's life. The way he talks, the way he walks, the way he deals with his parents, the way he respects his parents and, be, and, and, and is dutiful to them and doesn't talk back to them, the way he respects the youth, the way he respects his teachers, the way he doesn't deceive and cheat, the way he buys and sells. Islam gives the human being guidance for every aspect of his life. And it provides guidance for all human beings, regardless of their race, regardless of their color, regardless of their nationality or ethnicity. Spiritual guidance, how to connect, how to talk with your Creator. Intellectual guidance, how to think rationally, how to think logically, and also physical guidance. For the one who studies and researches Islam, you will find that Islam teaches nothing but peace and justice and morality and upright ethics and morals and respect, forgiveness, mercy and honesty. And to treat others not the way that they treat you, to treat others better than the way they treat you. And Islam teaches us that every single human being is responsible for his own actions and will be held accountable, maybe in this life or maybe in the next life after we all die and we go back and meet our Maker. Islam is the religion whose resources have remained unadulterated and unaltered for over 1400 years. The same Qur'an that the Muslims recite now in the Arabic language is the same Qur'an that was revealed 1400 years ago to God's final prophet and messenger Muhammad. Islam's divine revealed scripture which is contained in the Qur'an and contained in the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad is in harmony with established facts of science, clearly bearing the signature of the great and magnificent creator of this universe. And modern day science is still discovering things to this day that the Quran has mentioned over 1400 years ago. Islam provides answers to the essential questions that many of us may ask ourselves on a daily basis. 